Welcome! Welcome to Hug Nation. I am Halcyon, and truthfully, I didn't know what I was going to talk about for this week's Hug Nation until last night. And all of you last night were waking up with these thoughts. And so I am here today to tell you the meaning of life. Finding meaning in life is accomplished by eight things. One, moving. Two, Solving, three, helping, four, creating, five, listening, six, appreciating, seven, reading, eight, laughing. Are you ready? Now I should note that I am saying these things not as a position of authority where I am telling you what you should do. This is a list for me, but I'm going to share it because it's a guideline that I realized that I needed to hear, but I want to share it with you. Moving. You are an organism. Don't forget that. We live in a time when we have magical machines that can fly us through the air and machines that will build us cars that propel us through the world. We have so many technological advances that unless we are disciplined, it is very easy to get out of balance and to rely on and experience the world through digital technologies and through screens way more than we do in real life. I love and value this opportunity to connect in a digital way, but this is a part of a well-balanced breakfast. We need to remember that we are, no matter how many hours we spend behind a keyboard, we are wild beasts. We are filled with sensations. We are filled with nerves and muscles and we need to use these incredible machines to dance to play to stretch and we need to fuel our bodies with real food number two solving look life is going to throw you problems i bet right now you have got a huge list of obstacles work, school, relationships, health. Life is, by definition, a series of challenges. So, what are you going to do about it? You can, as we are often taught to do, every time something comes up, go, no! Uh, now I have to do that. Or, you can do, this is what I need to do now. A siren. This is what I need to deal with now. <laughs> so when you just shift your mind and realize there's always going to be something, instead of being frustrated by the obstacle, simply change your awareness to this is my task right now. Do one thing at a time, be present, and do it well. It's pretty simple. Now, if you ever find yourself in a position of being bored, try to find something that you can make better. The world is a duocracy. If you are complaining about things, that doesn't help anybody. Nobody is that excited about your great idea. They're excited by what you do. So if you see something that needs fixing, fix it. You see a weed, pull it. You want to soup up your car, do it. If you can find a way to fill your time working on interesting problems that are headed in a direction towards things that you value or enjoy or let you up, you win. That's the game of life. Getting involved with interesting projects that are solving things towards things you believe in. And it could be tiny things like figuring out the best outfit for this cool party or grand things like stopping a virus. Number three, helping. I have to be honest that I actually got tricked into this. I did not really understand helping until I started practicing gifting within the Burning Man community. I grew up thinking that that idea of like, hey, helping somebody else is the best way to feel better about yourself. I'm like, that's trite and it's lame and I'm too cool for that. 
I really know that the reason why you got to do good deeds is to kind of alleviate the guilt and the burden of all the good things that you have. And so you don't have to feel bad for the good things that you have that others don't because occasionally you do nice things for them. And that is so wrong. I talk about this all the time, but I mean, once you start to realize that somebody else's joy can give you joy, then the easiest way to make yourself happier in the world is by doing kind things for someone else. Big things, small things. And once you start to feel it, you then seek out opportunities. Now if I'm in the grocery store and I see somebody had to be in line that doesn't have enough money and they're deciding which thing they want to put back, I am, I'm like, yeah! Here's an opportunity for me to just like throw in a couple dollars and make this person's day a little bit better. It is infectious and it goes against everything we've been taught about looking out for yourself and, and everyone's out to get you. But if you let that go and try to just instead be an example of what you wish the world was like, you are immediately a rippling into the world of what we can be. You are no matter what. You have no choice. You have a rippling effect on the world. So why not make it best effort, the ideal? Okay, number four, creating. We are all kind of taught in some way that we are bad at art. And so we stop doing it and we say there are artists and there's us and we're not creative. This is a fundamental misunderstanding of what art is. Art is expression, art is beauty. If you express, or if you find something beautiful, ta-da, it's art. No authority, no commission can decide that's good art, that's bad art. You are in charge of your own art, which means it's not about any creation at all. It's about the mindset you have. It's about the choices you make. It isn't about canvas and paint. It's about acts where you are thinking and making a choice from a place of what do I think this should be? Not what do I think it, sh it should be, what they think it should be. What, 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 it's what feels right to me. For an artist, it's the paint should be blue here. But for you, it could be anything. The way you dress yourself, the way you answer the phone, the way you interrupt a meeting to call attention to a tree outside. Being an artist is inherent in being a human being. You just have to allow yourself permission and recognize that anybody that tries to say, nah, that that is the critic's voice and the critic's voice has no use for you. Number five, listening. If you can learn to be a good listener, you will instantly become more interesting yourself and more charismatic. People are craving to be heard. And if you can give people the gift of really listening to them, it can transform people. My grandpa used to spend a couple hours a week at a place at his retirement village called the Listening Post. And he would just sit there with a sign saying the Listening Post. And he would just sit and wait until someone sat down and to, tell, to talk to him and he would just listen. There's industries, careers, whether intentionally, like counseling or therapy or life coaching, and almost every other career, hairdressing, sales, that really, if you are a good listener, you are a tool of transformation for people. And along with this idea of listening, I would add listening to yourself is part of it too. Giving yourself the opportunity to be quiet and listen and not always do and fix and think and figure out, but instead sometimes go sit in the question, allow the muddy splashed waters to settle so that there can be clarity again. Learning to listen to others, learning to listen to yourself allows blossoms. 
Number six, appreciating. Man, if you have not noticed, we live in an amazing world. Amazing! But there's so much amazing, it's like everything's turned up to 11, so then we don't even notice it. It's so easy to go through your day and not taste your breakfast, not feel the shower, not notice the meadow as you drive by. But all around you, at all times, are miracles and amazing things. When we can practice that, we can learn to reset our baseline so that we can go back to that <gasps> then every step, every sensation, every awareness becomes that giddy child's place. Number seven, reading. The written word changed everything. And it's a shame that sometimes it's thought of like as an intellectual pursuit or we're like taught as in a young age that it's like something that the teacher gives you as an assignment. Because reading books, the written word, obliterated the concept of time. Suddenly, or over time, we've accumulated eons, epochs of experiences and ideas. And so you can go anywhere. You can experience anything. I love science fiction because it allows you to get into a headspace of something and, tr and play with ideas that are way outside of the reality that we live in now. And that is what books allow you to do. To to expand reality from what you've experienced and been taught into, into not only what is possible in your mind, but what has been possible in other people's minds. The world just balloons when you allow yourself to read. Now, you're going to want to watch a movie instead. You're going to think it's the same thing. It's entertainment, right? And theoretically, that would be true, except for one thing. Books are written by artists. Movies are created by show business. The amount of money at stake in a movie or a TV or anything like that is so great that it gets out of the hands of the artist and becomes a business. And so all sorts of factors have to be taken into consideration. Now there is tons of art that goes into visual media, but it is, it is like trying to, you know, find the nuggets of gold in a quarry, as opposed to a book, which every book is some artist's creation, some artist's expression at their highest. And that kind of idea of like the, the, that TV or movies are easier is something that you really need to kind of take into every part of your life. Our culture has created this instant click right off the freeway baseline zap your brain stem salty scratch uh, super flavorful experiences in food and entertainment in sex that just is just like cranks you to the highest and you deserve more you deserve the finest and so you have to slow down enough to get that fine meal to watch the, the play, to read the book, and to treat your mind with the respect that it deserves for being such an incredible, incredible thing. And number eight, laughing. If you don't think all this stuff is funny, if you don't think this daily thing, the walking around, the, then you aren't spending enough time naked in front of a mirror because it is either hilarious or tragic. And I prefer to think of it as amazing. And I try to smile or laugh whenever possible. When you can, be quirky over cool. 
be silly over serious. This is, it's fun. The alternative that it's serious, whew. right now, we are on a piece of rock hurtling through space, just the perfect distance from a star to maintain life. And in this lush and varied living ecosystem that we're a part of, at the end of one of the branches is this hairless monkey. And this hairless monkey, not only is it at this very moment battling all sorts of microscopic bacterial things and healing itself and nourishing itself, it's also equipped with, with an unbelievable network of systems and sensations and so that it can receive and experience the entire world that's happening around it. I take that back. It can experience a teeny tiny slip, a little sliver of the visual and auditory spectrum of what the universe is. But within that little sliver is so much color and light and amazing things. And that was before the monkeys got here. These hairless monkeys have been creating music for centuries. <sighs> Add that to it, music? Don't get me started. And then you've got this brain that's been able to receive all this stimulus and then located in some place that science doesn't even understand is our consciousness. This consciousness that allows you to hear and think and connect with me right now. This mystery that allows us to ponder the world we live in, to think about all that's happening and go, Whoa! And yet, if we don't practice those eight things, life gets away from you. And all you think about is the next obstacle. And everything is, this is going wrong and this is going wrong and my life. So we need to practice those eight things. Moving, solving, helping, creating, listening, appreciating, reading, and laughing. Wait, you might be asking yourself, how come loving isn't on the list? Mm -hmm. Because loving is the way that we do all of those things. Love is what we are. And those eight things are the way that we practice love in the world, even reading. And then when we start to walk that path and do those eight things and let a little bit more of ourselves out and be more artistic and create more and help more, we start to realize that we're all connected and it just gets easier and easier and it just becomes the natural thing to do. And then the next task at hand, the next obstacle is often <gasps> helping someone. Look at that. Didn't even mean to. The next task at hand is creating something. <gasps> Whoops. Didn't even mean to. It's solving. It's <gasps> because that's what we are. We are love. And that is the meaning of life. Thank you for being a part of it. I love you. <laughs> Namaste.